Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session on redirected walking. My name is Evan Sumer Rosenberg from the University of Minnesota, and I will be chairing this session. Um, we have five papers today in this session, one journal paper and four conference papers. And uh, please remember to submit questions via Slido, and then we will monitor that and ask them of the speakers afterwards. Uh, please feel free to discuss in Slack, but post any questions directed at the speaker in Slido. And now uh, we'll be right back while we change over to the first speaker. So one of the core problems in VR research is locomotion, where we're concerned with how we can enable users to move from point A to point B. Previous work has shown that really walking is the best form of locomotion. But a problem we encounter here is that the virtual environment can be bigger than the physical lab space. One solution to this problem is redirected walking. Redirected walking is a technique for exploring large virtual environments while really walking in a more limited physical space. With redirected walking, we have an interface of three gains which control the extent to which the user's rotation, translation, or curvature is compressed or expanded in the virtual environment. So for example, we can have a user walk along a curved path in the real world while following a straight line in the virtual world. When a user rotates, the angle of rotation may be different between the real and virtual worlds. Is everything okay? And moving in a straight line, the amount of translation between the real and virtual worlds can be different. When these gains are applied within certain thresholds, the discrepancy between movement in the real and virtual worlds is imperceptible. The goal is to keep the user within the tracking area. And so the question becomes, how should the gains be applied in order to do that? This is where we get steering algorithms, which describe how redirected walking gains should be applied to a user. Usually, we don't know where the user is about to walk, and so reasoning about gains must rely solely on information about the user's position within the tracking space. Generally, we can describe the user's state with four variables. First, we might look at the user's X and Z positions in the tracking space. We can also look at their heading direction, as well as their looking direction. Several heuristic-based steering algorithms have been developed. We focus on steer to center because it regularly outperforms other steering algorithms regardless of environment shape. Steer to center attempts to always redirect the user towards the center of the room. Now let's consider for a moment the domain of all possible steering algorithms, represented by this blue box. Some subset of this space is encapsulated by human intuition. These are the algorithms that humans are able to write down. We've developed several algorithms in this area, including steer to center. But by definition, we can never write down an algorithm outside of that region. The problem is there very well could be something better in the blue space. Not all problems are best suited for explicitly encoded solutions, and this is where reinforcement learning offers an intriguing data-driven alternative. Our work is focused on using reinforcement learning to try to find a steering algorithm that exists outside of the orange circle. So I'll take a moment to briefly describe the reinforcement learning framework. The idea here is that we're learning by trial and error. First of all, we have an agent, which is our entity that's doing the learning. And this agent exists in some environment in which it has a goal that it wants to achieve. There are two ways that the agent can interact with the environment. First, the agent can receive an observation and a reward from the environment. The observation is just a description of the current state of the environment, so the agent knows what's going on around it and the reward is a numerical signal of how good or bad that state is. Given this information, the agent is then allowed to choose an action to take in the environment. In doing so, the environment will ultimately transition to some new state, and this cycle will continue. 
In the long run, the agent seeks to maximize its cumulative future rewards. And importantly, the agent is not explicitly told how to do this. It figures out a strategy for itself purely through experience and trial and error. So just to give an overview of the rest of the talk, I'll discuss some related work, then describe our approach to this problem, steer by reinforcement learning. I'll then discuss the experiments we did to evaluate our method, and finish up by talking about some of the advantages that we see of using reinforcement learning for the redirected walking problem. So there are two notable pieces of related work. The first is Lietal, who proposed steer to optimal target. They use reinforcement learning to select one of 25 discrete targets within the tracking area, and then the user is steered towards that target. Chang et al. is the work that most closely aligns with our own, and they attempt to use reinforcement learning to directly select the transformation gains. Their method is mainly an improvement for environments with real-world obstacles, and does not outperform a heuristic-based method in a large unobstructed space. So now I'll describe our algorithm, Steer by Reinforcement Learning. If you remember back to the diagram of reinforcement learning, the first thing we want to consider is the observations that the agent is going to receive. In our case, we encode the environment state using the same information that I mentioned earlier. Four variables describing the user's position and orientation within the tracking space. We then concatenate 10 recent states from the user's history to form the observation that's passed to the agent. This is done to provide the agent with context about where the user is coming from and which directions they might be about to go. The agent itself consists of a neural network, the details of which are in our paper. After processing the observation, the neural network outputs three numbers representing the rotation, translation, and curvature gains that should be applied, and that constitutes an action. It's important to note that this is an end-to-end -end learning system going directly from an observation of the environment state to the gains that should be applied. The one remaining piece of the reinforcement learning problem is the reward. For our reward, we consider three numbers. The distance between the user and the nearest boundary in the forward direction, as well as at the two sides. Our award then consists of the forward distance plus the smaller of the left and right distances. This reward function is designed to incentivize having free space in directions that the user is likely about to walk. So now I'll describe the experiments we did in order to evaluate the performance of our agent. First, our agent is trained on randomly generated simulated paths. We train on simulated paths because reinforcement learning requires large quantities of training data and we simply didn't have access to a big enough data set of real user paths. However, in our framework, these simulated paths could easily be swapped out for real ones given a large enough data set. After training, we then look to compare our agent to having no redirection at all in addition to the steer to center algorithm. As a point of comparison, we measured virtual distance traveled before the first collision with a boundary. This comparison was first done for a set of 5,000 simulated paths. What we're really interested in, though, is how our model performs on real user paths. So we also evaluated the same models on a set of 10 real user paths. In the machine learning field, this is known as transfer learning an open problem, where the idea is that we're applying our model to a different set of data than it was trained on. We collected the real paths by simply asking users to explore a virtual replica of the historic Johnson House in Connecticut. If the user collided with the boundary of the tracking space, the path was paused and the user was reset towards the center of the tracking area. Now we'll look at the results of these two comparisons. On the left, we'll look at 95% confidence intervals of the additional distance that could be gained when using one steering algorithm over the other, and this was for the set of 5,000 simulated paths. When comparing steer to center versus no redirection, we found an average of 2.35 additional meters could be traveled before the first collision. Comparing steer by reinforcement learning to no redirection, 
we found on average 2.6 additional meters were gained. And comparing steer by reinforcement learning to steer to center, we found an average of 0.1 meters could be gained. Importantly, none of these three confidence intervals include zero and are therefore all statistically significant. Now on the right, we're looking at a box plot of the virtual distance traveled on the 10 real paths for the three steering algorithms. The thing to notice here is that we found a significant difference between the average distance traveled for steer by reinforcement learning and node redirection at all. This demonstrates that we successfully performed transfer learning, where our agent was able to generalize to the real user paths even though it was trained on less realistic simulated paths. We were unable to find any significant difference between steer to center and steer by reinforcement learning. So now I'll finish up by talking about some of the advantages of using reinforcement learning for redirected walking. First, this is an extremely flexible framework, and we can imagine training specialized agents for different scenarios. For example, if you imagine a virtual environment where users might be likely to follow predictable paths, we could train an agent specifically for that environment where we would hope that the agent could learn an implicit predictive algorithm. We could also train an agent to specialize in an unusually shaped tracking space. In either of these cases, we would imagine the specialized agent to be more effective than one trained for a more general setting. Our algorithm is also extremely easy to use in practice. Making a steering decision only requires a single forward pass through a relatively small neural network. On our modest hardware, the average time for this computation was about 0.4 milliseconds. Finally, we see lots of room for improvement in this area. First of all, this can simply come from having better training data. Again, we were unable to train on real user paths due to the lack of a large enough data set, but as large data sets of real user paths become available, it will be incredibly easy to plug those into our training framework, and we would expect to see a huge boost in performance. Finally, deep reinforcement learning is still a relatively new field that's rapidly improving, and as advances are made, we can expect to reap the benefits here. So to conclude, we used reinforcement learning to learn a steering algorithm that directly selects transformation gains with minimal human intervention. Our algorithm outperforms steer to center on simulated paths, and we demonstrated successful knowledge transfer to real user paths. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first end-to-end -end learning system that outperforms heuristic-based algorithms in unobstructed tracking spaces. Finally, we can still expect to see large improvements with future work. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Xianwei. I am from Zhejiang University. Okay, and uh, we're back here with uh, Ryan to answer some Q&A. Uh, we have uh, one question already on Slido. How long did the agent training take, and do you need to retrain for each physical environment? So uh, typically, so we trained our agents uh, until performance plateaued, and we trained a little bit after performance had plateaued, but Typically, this was about an hour of training in real time on our hardware. And it was, if I remember correctly, roughly the equivalent of 140 hours of time spent in the real world redirecting users. OK. Um, so I have a question I'd like to ask. Um, sure. You alluded to the uh, fact that this could potentially be um, 
trained on specific environments with uh, irregularly shaped tracking areas or obstacles. And yeah. last year at IEEE VR, there were a couple of papers on artificial potential field redirected walking that also examines this problem. And so I'm just asking for uh, some speculation on your point uh, about any anticipated advantages or drawbacks of using your, your approach for that pro, uh, use case versus say APF redirected walking. Yeah, so I mean, I guess I can't speak too uh, directly to sort of the pros and cons other than the advantage of using reinforcement learning is we are not imposing our own uh, bias about what we think an ideal solution to the problem is. Right. And so with the artificial potential fields, we're saying, well, this is sort of an approach that we think should work well. And it has been shown that it does work well. But with reinforcement learning, the hope is that, well, if we purely let the algorithm figure out an approach for itself, it might be able to come up with something better. Great. That makes sense. Um, I have another question on Slido. Um, the um, question is, how did you determine the reward function and did you evaluate other reward functions? Yeah, so, so we did evaluate a few reward functions and uh, the one that we ended up using, uh, we chose that because it gave us the best results. Um, so, you know, I think in the ideal world, the reward that we would want to use is what's called a sparse reward where uh, the only reward signal would just be a negative reward if the user collides with the wall and sort of no reward otherwise, because this imposes the least amount of bias on the problem, right? If with our reward function, we are technically giving the agent some uh, sort of indication of how we think it should solve the problem. Um, but the issue with this sort of sparse reward, even though it distills the goal of, you know, or the steering algorithm into its most pure form, uh, it it's really hard for reinforcement learning algorithms as they are today to learn from these sparse rewards. Because if you just have one sort of negative indication at the end of a long trajectory after you collide with the wall, it's hard for the algorithm to um, decide which actions along the way meaningfully contributed to that eventual outcome. But as reinforcement learning continues to advance and this problem is eventually addressed, we would like to be able to use those advances here and transition to this more sparse reward. Okay, great. Uh, we're out of time for questions, so we'll be right back as we transition to the next speaker. Thank you. Hi, and we're back. Um, so our next speaker is a conference paper entitled Feature Guided Path Redirection for VR Navigation, and it is presented by Yi Lu. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Yi Liu from Beihang University, Beijing, China. Our paper is Feature Guided Path Redirection for VR Navigation. This work is together with Anton Cao, Lili Wang from Beihang University, and with Voiku Popescu from Purdue University. Path redirection for virtual reality navigation allows the user to explore a larger virtual environment where the VR, VR application is hosted in a limited physical space. Static path redirection methods deform the workable part of the VE. 
to fit the physical space. However, this could result in large distortions of the VE. Here, conventional static path redirection method distorts statues and hides right statues from the user. Our insight is to avoid distorting high detail regions where there are high density of visual features and concentrated distortions in regions where there are fewer visual features. So that is exact, exactly what we did. In the right image, the statues are shown free of distortions and, and occlusions. Our method dis avoids distorting high detail regions at the cost of distorting more aggressively the more boring regions of the VE, such as a corridor beyond the statues. Here is a very quick re review of previous work on static path re redirection. One approach is to pre-compute a mapping of the virtual space to a real space. The, the advantage is that the mapping has low overall distortion. Don't at all extend it, this method. Adopting a divide and conquer strategy that focuses on mapping individuals are parts of the workable path to avoid that any of these paths are distorted excessively. However, both methods may cause large distortion at high detail regions of VE that is visual sensitive to the users because they didn't consider the visual features of the VE. We propose a static path redirection method which takes into account the visual features of the VE. Here is an overview of our method. In the first step of line step, we construct a, a visual feature map that records the locations of the VE with high detail. In the second of line step, we compute a mapping between the workable part of the VE and the physical space using a mass spring optimization. Then at the runtime, Path redirection is refined based on the current user viewpoint with a detail preserving rendering algorithm that minimizes visual distortions. In the first step, we quantify geometric detail at each vertex of VE. The geometric detail for a vertex is computed as the average normal gradient over the neighboring vertices. Here is a visualization of computed geometric detail. Geometric detail is view independent as it does not depend on the user view. In order to estimate of line visual features that depend on the user view, we define a set of viewpoints that samples uniformly all possible user viewpoints. For each viewpoint inside, we render the VE from the viewpoint and we estimate uh, in the re resulting image of visual features such as edges, lines, corners, and textural salience. Here are the view, view dependent features extracted for the one of the viewpoints. The visual features are integrated into a visual feature map similar to a light map. The visual feature map is a surface texture that stores pre-computed information to be conveniently reused at runtime. A text saw is computed by combining the various features, then the textures are packed into an address. In the second of line step, a mapping between the workable part of the VE and the physical space is, is constructed with a mass spring system. The inputs of this step are visual feature map, navigation mesh of the VE, and the physical space. The output is a virtual physical mapping in mass spring system. A mass particle has three attributes, position, mass, and the local sensitivity to distortion AI, which is computed using feature map. Three types of forces act upon the mass, spring tension force TIJ, deformation resisting force FJ, FK, FI, which oppose the change of distortion angle delta theta. A bounding conforming force BI, that acts on mass only if it's outside the physical space and push it back. Here is the simulation of our mass swing system. Yellow frame is the boundary of physical space. Red points represent the vertices of navigation mesh. Lines represent the virtual path in the VE. 
The algorithm simulates the mass spring system iteratively until equilibrium is reached. The whole radioactive virtual path is inside the physical space, and the virtual to physical mapping is constructed. In detail preserving rendering, we first fold the VE based on a Bezier transformation. The inputs are, are, are the original VE and the virtual physical mapping. The output is a folded VE. For example, for these blue red angles in the VE, we transform vertex V to vertex V prime through the Bezier transformation, uh, which relies on the virtual to physical mapping computed offline. Then we refine high detail regions, level region, now known user viewpoint. First, a region of VE textured with visual feature map in the proximity of the current viewpoint is rendered also graphically from, uh, from the top. Second, high detail regions are detected. At last, a rigid body transformation to preserve original geometry is applied. After this step, we render folded VE. The figure shows the comparison of the ground truth over method ways and without refinement. The refinement alleviates the stretching of the statue. We have tested our method on five things. In S1, S2, and S3, we compared our method with the method without feature guidance. In S4 and S5, we compared our method with the state-of-art methods, same method and S2C method. We investigated the amount of path distortion through the average distortion angle over all springs in the mass spring system. The table shows the average and maximum path distortions for S1, S2, and S3, with and without feature guidance, both over the entire path as well as high detail regions. Our method yields smaller average distortions in both the entire path and high detail regions. Moreover, in high detail regions, both the maximum and the average path distortions are reduced with our method. The figure visualizes the path distortions with different colors. Regions R1 and R2 have high feature density. With feature guidance, the path is yellow or green. Without feature, gui without feature guidance, the path is red or orange, which indicates large distortions. Regions R3 has low feature density. With feature guidance, the path is red. Without feature guidance, the path is yellow. Our feature guidance method moves a distortion away from R1 and R2 and concentrates it at R3. We measure view independent geometry distortion, which is 3D triangles distortion of V geometry. The table gives the average and maximum distortion over the entire, over the entire V geometry and high detail regions with and without feature guidance. Our feature guidance method reduce, reduces view independent distortion in all cases. As it strives to reduce distortion over regions with high geometry com complexity, therefore exempting a large number of triangles from significant distortions. We also investigated the view dependent distortion, which is the distortions of the projected triangles in the screen space visible from the user view. The figure shows a ground truth over render with our method and with refinement, and with our method but without refinement. Column three and five show distortion map. White pixels mean large distortions. The view dependent distortions shown for each frame is reduced by the refinement. We compared our method with the prior state state-of-art method smooth assembled mapping method. The table shows that our method reduces average view independent distortion. In high detail areas, both the average and maximum view independent distortions are reduced. We also design a user study to test our method. The user study has three conditions, steer to center, SAM, and our method. 16 participants were asked to find the exist in two ways. The objective metric we used is 3D mesh 
distortion over frames. The results show an advantage over all method over SAM for S4, and a significant advantage over all method over SAM for S5. We also collected the questionnaires from the particip participants from the visual fidelity questionnaire. It can be seen that our method has a significant advantage over SAM on both S4 and S5 from locomotion fidelity questionnaire and SSQ. It can be seen our method and SAM achieves better locomotion fidelity and SSQ results than S2C. In conclusion, we have presented an approach for path redirection that takes into account visual features of virtual environment. Our feature or our method achieves path redirection with less 2D and 3D distortions for regions with abundant visual detail. And as a result, provides a more comfortable VR user experience. One limitation is our method can handle planar vertical surface with high detail. Uh, as this had no footprint in the horizontal plan, this could be remedied by encasing any such region in a thin box used for the purpose of orthographic projection. Another limitation is that visual features are detected from the standard features of the VE geometry and texture. We will explore making use of application-specific knowledge of what is truly important to the user in each application context. One direction of future work is to bring idea of visual feature aware optimization to a realm of dynamic mapping methods. Longer term, research should continue to address the practicality of the VR interface, such that the effectiveness of experiencing a 3D data side where immersed in its leverage beyond niche applications in entertainment. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Okay, we have some time for questions. Um, please post your questions to Slido. Uh, in the meantime, while we uh, wait for questions, uh, I'll ask one. Uh, what were the gain values that you used in your implementation of steer to center during your user study comparison? Uh, the gain value. Uh, could you could you pardon the question again? Sorry. So so steer to center requires that you specify the gains that you're going to be using for redirection: rotation gain, curvature gain, translation gain, and yeah. um, th those thresholds are that you choose are very, people are very sensitive to the thresholds that you choose. So I was wondering, because your, your uh, study showed lower SSQ scores with your method, what were you comparing against? Uh, what's the last sentence, sorry? <laughs> oh, I was, uh, I was saying, um, because your method showed lower SSQ scores compared yeah, yeah. to the center, I was wondering how, what the gain thresholds were or steer to center that you were comparing your algorithm against? Uh, in fact, we, our method is static, static path red redirection, and we, we, we don't use the gains uh, in, in our method. And we, we use, um, we, we compu compute the path, the mapping offline and, and the refinement. In, yes, uh, I understand yeah. that. I was yeah. asking about steer to center. In your yeah. user study. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll take this offline. Okay. Okay. Are there any, okay. Are there any other questions in Slido? Let's see. Um, uh, there are no questions currently posted in Slido. <laughs> um, so uh, let's go ahead and thank our speaker. And also, I forgot because we're not having uh, applause to thank our previous speaker. So let's virtually applaud for both of our previous speakers. And we'll be right back while we change to our next speaker. Thank you.
Okay, our next speaker is uh, Jean-Wei Chen, and he'll be presenting Dynamic Artificial Potential Fields for Multi-User Redirected Walking. Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Xianwei. I am from Zhejiang University of Technology. The title of my paper is Dynamic Artificial Potential Fields for Multi-User Redirected Walking. Today, I will introduce the paper in the following four aspects. They are introduction, methodology, experiments, and conclusion. The existing research has shown that Walking is the most natural way of behavior and has many advantages on improving sensory experience for VR systems. Thus, redirected walking is a good way for immersive VR systems. However, there may be multiple users sharing the same physical space, which is smaller than virtual environment, and all of them are in a dynamic state. Then, there is question, how to solve the problem of potential collisions among the users who are moving both virtually and physically within the same physical space? Two kinds of redirected working methods have been proposed for immersive VR systems, including redirected working for single user and redirected working for multiple users. The methods of redirected walking for single user cannot effectively solve the problem of multiple users collision avoidance. And the disadvantages of the existing methods for multiple users are that some methods don't take into account the constraints of physical space size or only support two users. And uh, some methods, such as artificial potential fields redirected working, only consider the current state of users. When multiple users are present in the same physical space, they may be gathered in a certain area. So, in order to avoid collisions and uh, make full use of physical space, we can steer the user to an open space and away from other users. The key idea of our paper is steering the user to an open physical space and away from other users. We proposed a priority mechanism to ensure that users on the verge of collision are given priority and select a better steering target to effectively steer the user to an open space. What's more, the future avatar of the user is created to reduce the possible collisions. Okay, the overview of our method. We present a method of setting the attraction target with priority and a new prediction algorithm based on the current user state to create an avatar. This method first calculates the priority for each user and calculates a reasonable attraction target for each user in the physical space. Then, generates an attractive vector for the user. Next, it predicts the user's future location and creates an avatar for each user. The avatar is looked at as an obstacle and applies additional repulsive vectors to other users. Finally, our method combines these force vectors into a new resultant force vector to steer the user to an open space. In artificial potential fields, the user is repulsed by the wall and other users. If the total force is larger, the user will be closer to the wall or other users. Therefore, the likelihood of collision is greater. Similarly, 
the larger the angle between the direction and the user's orientation is, the greater the likelihood of collision will be. The user is sorted according to the probability of collision. The smaller the collision probability is, the higher the user priority is. In order to select a better steering target, we rasterize the physical space, and the center of each grid is a candidate steering target. The grid will be marked as an obstacle if the user occupies the grid. The target is selected for each user according to the priority from high to low. The sum of the maximum indicates that the grid is the primary steering target. Then our method finds the largest rectangle area that has no obstacles and contains primary target as a selection area. Finally, calculate the steering target in this selection area. Each user in the physical space is in a state of constant motion. According to considering the future location of the user, it can push other users away from the adverse's location and help reduce the occurrence of collision. We can predict the future position one meter away from the current position as the user's avastor. The avastor will also generate force to other users, but it will be reduced. When the user is about to collide with an obstacle or other users, the reset mechanism will be triggered. It will remind the user and steer the user to turn to the direction of total force vector. The direction of rotation is determined by the large angle between the current orientation of the user and the total force vector. In this case, the smaller the rotation gain is, the smaller the impact on user is. It is necessary to perform a large number of experiments and test many parameters to verify the validity of redirected working algorithms. In our system, the virtual path consists of a series of navigation points. The user continuously moves towards the next navigation point, and the distance between two navigation points is randomly set from 4 to 16 meters. The turning angle of each navigation point is 90 degree, and the direction is random. When the user is 1 meter away from the obstacle, the system triggers the reset mechanism. In order to study the effectiveness of proposed method, we conducted a comparative experiments on different methods, including our method and the original APF redirected working. The parameters of the experiment are shown in the table. The experiment results are in the table. As shown in the table, for many users, the size of physical space will limit the effects of redirected working algorithms. This will be improved when the number of users decreases, and our algorithm is better than 
artificial potential fields redirected working when the physical space is large. What's more, there is significant difference when the user density is low. In order to further analyze the impact of physical space size on the performance of our algorithm, we analyze the three indicators. The average number of resets triggered by other users, the average number of resets triggered by walls, and the average physical distance from center. The parameters of the experiment are shown in the table. The results are shown in the four charts. As shown in the charts, the size of physical space has a certain impact on the performance of our algorithm. The larger the physical space is, the fewer the number of reset is. The larger the physical space is, the larger the average distance is. Two different applications were used to evaluate the effectiveness of APF redirected walking and our dynamic APF redirected walking for multiple users. These two applications of multi-user redirected walking were carried out in the same physical space for two different large virtual environments. One is the maze thing, the other is an office thing. The pictures above show the walking path in the virtual environment, and the pictures below show the walking path in the physical space. As shown in the charts, the number of resets is fewer when using our dynamic artificial potential fields redirected working method. That is to say, our method is better than original method. In most situations, our method have a better performance and can decrease the number of reset by about 20%. But the limitation is that there is no significant difference between our method and the original method when user density is high. In the future, we are going to improve steering strategy by considering the characteristics of a virtual theme and apply our method to irregular physical space. Okay, we're back and uh, we have a question in Slido. Uh, the question is, what was the observed relationship between environment size and the number of participants? How scalable do you think this method is? Actually, it was, uh, we, we just uh, asked our, uh, my classmates to Join the experiments, and uh, uh, we don't consider the actual relations between 
two of them. Right. I, I think the question is is asking you to just speculate a little bit about um, how how many users and how big of a space could this support theoretically. Oh, oh okay. Uh, we um, we uh, so far we have just test two two six users and uh, we found that actually uh, it's uh, mm, thirty it's thirty two thirty meters ten meters uh, thirty meters is uh, better and uh, we think that the uh the physical space is not good that is too small too small okay our next question comes from eric hodgson uh, it is predicting future states of users adds uncertainty how did you handle users who did not go where they predicted to what steps did you take to balance uncertainty versus performance? Mm, actually, we just predict the avatars uh, that one meters from the users. So the uh, predict will be, the accuracy of uh, predict will be mm, high and uh, uh, and the parameters uh, in the algorithm, we just test it in our simulation method. And uh, uh, that's all. OK. Um, that's all the questions we have in Slido. So let's virtually thank our speaker. And we'll be right back while we change to the next speaker. Okay. Okay, our next two papers are both conference papers presented by the same author. Uh, the first one is Optimal Planning for Redirected Walking Based on Reinforcement Learning in Multi-User Environment with Irregularly Shaped Physical Space, presented by Dai Hong Min. Hello, I'm Dai Hong Min. I am the third author of this study and I am presenting on behalf of the first author. In this study, we present optimal planning method for redirected walking based on reinforcement learning in multi-user environment with irregularly shaped physical space. This work has been done by Dong Yong Lee, Yong Eun Jo, and Professor In Kwon Lee. We covered subtle continuous redirected walking this redirected walking induces the user to avoid physical collisions by continuously applying a level of distortion that the user does not notice. Typically, three distortion variables are used. Rotation, translation, and curvature. Recently, there have been studies on bending gain. Redirected walking algorithms are the ones that stipulate when and how to apply these distortion variables. This is the overview of our method. Our method, called MS2T, considers each user's position and leads them to the optimal condition without collisions. 
to create this policy, we used reinforcement learning. The redirected working system using value-based reinforcement learning follows this process. When state X is input to model G, the model uses policy pi and reward function R to set the Q value of each action. By learning this, the model selects the action with the best score, thereby enabling optimal planning. The states of MS2T contains the information of target user, other users, and physical space for 64 time steps. In particular, the following two types of information are used. First, it uses the information of the target user's virtual and physical space movement. This includes position information and direction information in virtual and physical space. And it is embedded through the GRU layer in the Q network. Second, it uses an image of physical space. A is an image of the target user's position in physical space. B is an image of the other user's position in physical space. C is an image of information about the physical space. And D is the sum of these three images and represented as RGB image. These images are like video information because they have a stack of 64 time steps. The actions of MS2T are steering or pre-reset toward a point in the physical space that is divided into 32 by 32 grids. If the S2T only considers the physical space that the user can proceed, the proposed method also considers steering target that the user cannot proceed. In the picture at the bottom right, the blue path proceeds toward the target X in a progressible space, and the red path proceeds toward the target X in a non-progressible space. At this time, the actual user has fewer collisions when guided by the red path. This means that considering long-term, non-progressive points can benefit the total number of collisions. Pre-resetting is an action that the model judge in advance to suppress possible collisions in the future. The two actions have in common that they work towards a target point divided into 32 by 32 grids. The reward function of MS2T applies different reward according to the selected action. If steering action is selected, a penalty of minus 10 is applied when colliding with a wall or other users. Otherwise, a reward considering the wall, user, and previous action is applied. The closer the distance between the user and the wall, the lower reward is applied. And the closer the distance between users, the lower reward is applied. The further away from the previously selected target, the lower reward is applied. In case of selecting pre-resetting action, apply reward which is less than the steering action, but higher than collision. The Q network of MS2T uses D3QN architecture. This is the form of dividing the Q value by advantage and value and calculating each, and then adding them. We use 3D CNN layers to process sequential imaged information. And the virtual and physical movement information of the target user is embedded in the image information throughout one layer of the GRU layer. To compare MS2T with other algorithms, we ran live user experiments and simulation experiments. In the live user experiment, we conducted a single user and two user experiment. At this time, the virtual space comprised of several passages. As a live user experiment, 
we tested the following hypothesis. First, the increase of thickness produced by MS2T will be the same as the other three algorithms. And second, for a single user, all four algorithms will perform similarly. But for two users, the MS2T will outperform the S2C and S2T. The simulated thickness score measured in the LIBUS experiment is as follows. There is no statistically significant differences were found. Therefore, hypothesis H1 was correct. For the number of resets, we conducted a 4x2 two-way ANOVA test. At this time, the algorithm and the number of users had a large main effect. As a result of using Vostok test, in the case of a single user, there was no significant difference between MS2T, S2T, and APAP, and there was a significant difference from S2C. For two users, MS2T and APAP achieved the same level, and relatively few resets were obtained compared to S2T and S2C. Therefore, hypothesis H2 was also satisfied. We also conducted a simulation experiment. For simulation experiment, we have collected the virtual walking paths of real users. In a virtual space of 80 by 80 square meters, the items were placed by every 2 meters. And after instructing the users to pick up all these items, the paths of the user were collected. At this time, the physical space was 6 by 6 square meters, but the limit of space was solved using 2 to 1 ton. A total of 44 real user walking passes have been collected. We classified the experiment into two conditions. The first is an experiment on various loom size, and the second is an experiment on various loom shapes. Through the simulation experiment, we made three hypotheses and verified them. First of all, in the case of a single simulated user, MS2T will perform similarly to S2T in a square physical space of the same size. S2C will have a lower collision performance than the other three algorithms. To analyze the hypothesis H3 for a single user case with experimental results of various loom sizes, we conducted a 4x4 two-way ANOVA test. The algorithm and loom size had a large main effect, and the interaction effect between the two was also significant. The order of reset counts was the lowest for MS2T and S2T, followed by APF and S2C. The larger the space, the smaller the total number of resets. This result satisfied the hypothesis H3. The next hypothesis is, in the case of multiple simulated users, MS2T will yield better performance than S2T because MS2T considers other users, but S2T does not consider it. In addition, MS2T will perform better than APF and S2C because collisions can be reduced through prediction-based actions such as pre-reset. To verify this, we conducted an ANOVA test on the results of multiple users. The algorithm, room size, and the number of users all had a large main effect, and all two-way, three-way interactions were also significant. The order of reset count seen by the Tukey test was the lowest in MS2T, followed by APF. S2T and S2C. When looking at these results through multiple linear regression analysis, the following equation was obtained. In particular, 
the MSTOT can see that the coefficient for the number of users is lower than the other algorithms. Therefore, these results satisfy the hypothesis H4. The last hypothesis is STOT will perform similarly to MSTOT in the convex space, but it will not perform well in the concave space. And MSOT will perform well in the space of the shape that is used for learning. But it will perform poorly in spaces that were not. To analyze the experimental results for various loom shapes, we conducted a 4x6 2A ANOVA test. The algorithm and loom shape had a larger main effect and the interaction effect between the two was also significant. Throughout the Tukey test, the order of reset count between these algorithms was small in order of MSTOT, APF, STOT, and S2C. The number of resets according to the loom shape was the smallest in the rectangular shape and the largest in the cross shape. Even in a triangle shape that was not used for learning, the MSOT had the lowest reset count. In addition, even in T shape, which was not used for learning, MSOT, MSOT also showed a low level of reset count similar to APF. So the hypothesis H5 was partially correct. Discussions and conclusions. The total number of reset count of MSTOT was greatly influenced by the number of pre-reset actions. Also, compared to other algorithms, the number of collisions between users was significantly less than the number of collisions with words. It can be seen that in the learning, reset with the word increased the total number of resets by one. But resets between users increase the total number of resets by two, so it can be seen that learning was done in the direction of reducing the total number of resets. Whenever the number of users increases, the MSOT requires an additional 0.4 milliseconds of computation time. Due to the lack of testing space and equipment, we were only able to experiment on the limited conditions in real user experiments. In addition, MSTOT is difficult to operate in a real-time environment if there are more than 32 users or the GPU is not available. In the future, this planning can be further enhanced by considering not only the internal structure of the virtual space, but also the user's point of interest. In addition, we plan to test alternative reinforcement learning methods that can handle continuous action spaces, such as PPO or A3C. Thank you for listening. Okay, we're back. Um, the speaker is with us, although we don't have video, just uh, audio connection. Um, so uh, I'll get the uh, question started off by asking the same question that I asked of an earlier speaker, because it also applies here. Uh, given that you compared to steer to center and APF uh, RDW, I'm curious about um, whether you use the same detection threshold or, uh, or same gain levels 
uh, thresholds for all of your algorithms? And if so, what were the, those values that you chose? Yes, we use the same value of the gain. Uh, for the curvature gain, we use 7.5 meters for curvature radius. And for the rotation, we use minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you selected them, uh, seems like from the literature. So that's great. Um, the, let's see, we, uh, I'm not seeing any questions in Slido. So I'll ask one more question. Okay. Um, so earlier in this session, we saw um, the, another talk that used reinforcement learning, although in a more single user case and you're using it in a multi-user case. Um, I was curious to if you were willing to compare and contrast sort of your approach to reinforcement, using reinforcement learning to theirs, um, just because, uh, you know, there's some commonalities. Yeah, so, so the question is, uh, the compel or Two. Yeah, I was just asking for your uh, sort of um, quick assessment of sort of the the differences in the ways or similarities in the ways that you and the other speaker used reinforcement learning. If you're not sure about that, you don't have to answer it. But I was just curious. Uh, so the question is: the simulator environment was different. Um, the the, uh, uh, the similarities in the method of using reinforcement learning on this problem to the previous first speaker in the session that also used reinforcement learning. Uh, okay, I will take it. Is the right? Uh, yes, it is concept is very similar, but I think the first, first order may be using police-based reinforcement learning, but we used uh, value-based reinforcement learning Yes. Okay. Okay. I was just asking because I am not an expert in reinforcement learning, so I was curious. Um, okay. So uh, I don't see any other. Oh, I see one more question pop up at the last second, but uh, we are over time, so we need to move to the last speaker. Um, so, which is also you. So I think we will be right back while we just get the screen share up. Okay, and our last uh, paper for this session, also a conference paper, is Shaking Hands in Virtual Space, Recovery and Redirected Walking for Direct Interaction Between Two Users, also presented by Dai Hongming. Okay, thank you for introducing. Hello, it's me again. I'm Dai Hongmin, the presenter of Shaking Hands in Virtual Space. In this study, we present a user interaction problem that occurs in a multi-user redirected working environment and we suggest ways to solve it. This work has been done with my colleagues, Dong Yong Lee, Yong Eun Cho, and Professor Ing Won Lee. Redirected walking is a locomotion technique that allows you to walk in a virtual space that is larger than the physical space. And it provides a higher presence to the user. This can be done by manipulating the user's path by distorting the virtual environment. And thus, users can explore the large virtual space in such a narrow physical space. And in the subtle redirected walking technique, there is a value called gain that determines how to give distortion. Rotation gain distorts the degree of rotation of the user and translation gain distorts the distance traveled. In addition, the coverage gain distorts 
the user's direction of movement. These distortions are applied only to the extent that the user does not notice. So each gain has a threshold. However, in a multi-user redirected walking environment that shares the same virtual space and physical space, the following problems occur. If two users are moving while applying redirection, there is no guarantee that they can actually meet in physical space when they all meet in the virtual space. In other words, when redirection is applied, a relative positional difference occurs between physical space and virtual space. Because of this problem, even if there is a direct interaction between the virtual users, there will be no interaction in the physical space. So there is no haptic feedback. We assume that when two users meet in the virtual space, if they can also meet in the physical space and feel haptic feedback, they can feel a higher presence. We present the recovered state and the recovery algorithm to solve this problem. A recovered state is a state that multiple users have the same relative positions and orientations in the virtual and physical space. When two users are located in the virtual space like A, B indicates the recovered state. In a recovered state, the distance between users and the relative direction of progress must have the same values as in the virtual and physical spaces, respectively. So to satisfy the recovered state, the following conditions must be satisfied. In the recovered state, for example, if A yells towards B in the virtual space, B can hear it from the direction of the A at the same level in the physical space. Therefore, C is not the recovered state. The recovery algorithm is a series of steps to enable two users to realize the recovered state. The prerequisite for this algorithm is firstly for only two users. And second, the two users walk in a straight line toward each other when a recovery signal has triggered. And there are no obstacles in virtual and physical space. And virtual space is larger than the physical space. And physical space is a form of a square. Based on these prerequisites, the recovery algorithm utilizes redirected walking technique to bring both users to a recovered state. The recovery algorithm is applied after the recovery signal has triggered. At this time, the position and direction of users can be very diverse. This is because redirected walking causes relative position differences in virtual and physical space. The recovery algorithm provides a suitable solution for all different cases. First, the distance between two users in the virtual space is greater than the size of the physical space. In this case, the, the distance between two users must first be narrowed to make a recovered state. Therefore, in this step, we focus on more on in reducing reset using the following existing algorithms such as tier to center, tier to optimal target, and so on until the distance is close enough. These algorithms are mainly focused on reducing the, the number of collisions. The second case is that the distance between two users in the virtual is smaller than the length of the physical space, but there is enough distance. Having enough distance means that <clears throat> virtual distance is bigger than the physical distance that is multiplied by a minimum of translation gain. 
It will be explained in more detail in the next, next case. In this case, the user's path is distorted in the direction of satisfied to the recovered state. Throughout the following equation, gain values of two users are obtained and applied in the optimal direction to satisfy the recovery condition. Looking at each term in the formula, it is set to set the optimized value in the direction that satisfy, satisfied <clears throat> each recovery condition. By solving this quadratic programming problem, we can get the optimal gain value to quickly, to, to quickly make the recovered state for each user. Proceeding in this way, the moment comes when the distance between two users in the virtual space becomes equal to the physical space. At this moment, we use a technique called angle alignment reset. Angle alignment reset is a method that resets the user by the relative angle difference between virtual and physical space by using rotational gain. If users proceed to this moment, users can satisfy the angular condition of recovery, recover the state. And in some cases, uh, for in this example, like this example, users can satisfy the distance condition of, to, of the recovered state. In this example, the recovered state is satisfied. The following is a demonstration video that enables direct interaction between two users by applying a recovery algorithm. As you can see, when users meet in the virtual space, they are also meet in the physical space. We conducted a live user test to see how the users feel about making a recorded state. We conducted experiments on cases where the recovered state was guaranteed through the recovery algorithm and when the recovered state was not guaranteed by not using the recovery algorithm. In the experiment, the two participants walk straight toward each other and shake hands when they are close enough in the virtual space. In each case, after the experiment was finished, a questionnaire about simulated sickness, system usability, presence and co-presence was conducted. As a result, first, simulated sickness did not show a statistically significant difference. For the other three questionnaires, we could get higher score when we guaranteed the recovered state. In summary, the recovery algorithm does not affect on simulated sickness. And by providing a recovered state, users can feel higher system satisfaction and presence and can feel more like <clears throat> can feel more like being with others in the virtual space uh, that is co-presence. The last case is when the distance between two users in the virtual is significantly smaller than the physical space. In this case, no matter how much distortion is made within the gain threshold, it is impossible to get close in physical space when the two users are close enough in the virtual space. In this case, we first perform angle alignment reset and next, we use a technique called over to recovery technique. Over to recovery techniques are a method that enforced to ensure a recovered state, even if the user notices the recovery process. This is applied when the condition of case three is satisfied. And we propose the following three methods 
using the overt technique used in the existing redirected working technique. First, freeze backup technique is a method to stop the virtual space when the case three conditions condition is satisfied, adjust the user's position, and then resume the virtual space again. The user's position is adjusted to a position that does not satisfy the case three. Then it turns to the case two and users can make the recovered state by recovery algorithm. In the live user experiment, we ordered the user to move over the following virtual object. Second, change blindness with this structure technique. This technique is a method that creates an object that catches the user's attention and change the virtual space while the users focus on the object. While the user is looking at the object, we change the virtual space that condi condition of case three is not satisfied. In the live user experiment, we use the dog as a distractor and instructed the users to see the dog when it appeared. The last over to recovery technique is expand gain threshold. Previously, distortions were made only to the extent that user did not notice. In this technique, the threshold is expanded to make a recovered state, even if the user notices distortion. In this case, the user feels as if he is walking forward in the physical space but hardly moves forward in the virtual world. We also conducted a live user experiments to see which of the over to recovery techniques are the best. The questionnaires are, were reused and experiments were conducted on the following four cases. Without over to recovery technique, freeze backup, change blindness with destructors and expand gain threshold. As a result, the change blindness with districtors scored high on most questionnaires. We further investigated user preferences for over to recovery technique after completing the experiment. And 12 people said change blindness with districtors was the most preferred method. However, we think the results may vary depending on the actual implementation. In conclusion, we propose the recovery algorithm that ensures simultaneous direct interaction in virtual and physical spaces in a multi-user redirected working environment. Accordingly, users can be provided with higher system satisfaction, presence, and co-presence. However, the recovery algorithm only guarantees a recovered state between two users and has the limitation that the recovery signal must be triggered manually. Also, it can be used effectively only when working in a straight line. For example, if there are obstacles in virtual space, the angle alignment reset can be occurred several times. We think that by improving these things in the future, we can further develop the recovery algorithm. Thank you for listening. Is there any questions? Okay, we have a couple questions on Slido. Uh, the first question comes from Gerald Thomas. It says, this algorithm requires that users be instructed to begin recovery. Do you have ideas for how this could be done in a more dynamic or as needed manner? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, we think it is very difficult to know how, when the user want to interact someone or interact someone, but it can be solved by a deep learning method, we think. Okay. Yes, pre yeah, predict on um, predict the, the moment of recovery required, maybe. 
Okay. Uh, we have a question from Hedges Copper. Do you have an estimate on the minimum physical space size that allows the recovery to succeed? Uh, we think the physical space size is not important because we tested in uh, five by five meters, but the recovery can be guaranteed on many physical space size because it covered all of the physical space size. Okay. Um, our third question comes from Tong Yu Ni. Uh, what is the threshold of the distance between users before we start recovery? Uh, it is also not <clears throat> a problem because uh, the distance between users before start recovery. Um, Uh, the users can watch each other in the virtual space. Then we can apply recovery algorithm. Uh, how distance is long? Long. So the distance between user is not the matter. Okay. Um, all right, and uh, that's all our questions, and we're also exactly at uh, 3.30, so uh, let's thank our last speaker, and uh, this will conclude this session, so um, we thank our speaker. Um, before everyone signs uh, or closes out of Twitch, I've been asked by the uh, organizers to please pass along a message, um, and that is to please encourage you all to visit the hub rooms for events that follow the particular session. Um, especially uh, the speakers, uh, there are people who have been going over to hubs uh, for some of the other sessions and, and would like to talk and meet with the speakers. So if you have the ability to go into hubs, um, that we, uh, we encourage that. Um, and you could possibly, to make it easier, you could go into the track, same track room in hubs as the uh, session. So for example, our section is, I believe, in great room two. Um, so that one would be um, the first, uh, second large track room, or you could post on Slack where you are so people can find you. Uh, with that, I will close this session. Thank you very much.